Although baking sodas had many medical uses back in the day when it was popular for doctors to use prescribed baking soda for many different ailments, uh, you can brush your teeth with it. You can put baking soda in your bath. You can also, it'll, sometimes it'll help with uh, too much stomach acid. Um, and it can also help with a headache, believe it or not. A little bit of baking soda. Best to take on an empty stomach. But one of the disadvantages of baking soda, and here's my kitty cat making an introduction here, it's a little feather, uh, is that uh, it, it has sodium. It's sodium bicarbonate. So you can buy what you call is potassium bicarbonate. So I got pharmaceutical and food grade ingredients, pure potassium bicarbonate. Now, it does taste a little bit different, but what I like to do is this. I'll take, they'll tell you to squeeze a lemon, but I don't bother doing that. I just get this stuff called 100% lemon juice, real lemon. Pour a little bit in here, probably a couple ounces, and with ice. And sometimes I'll take the baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, but a lot of times I'll also take the potassium bicarbonate. And after I put a little bit of this in there, I'll add some water, and I'll take a good heaping teaspoon of this potassium bicarbonate and put it in there. And what happens is that this will foam up. So I go like that. <laughs> Let the because it, it's like even if you put a little bit in there, sometimes you even if it's I'm using a tall glass. It can go over the top of this tall cup. I think this is a 24 ouncer. So I'll hold this over that. These are my Cooter's Garage things here. See, 01. We got Cooter's Garage on the other side too. And let the um, bicarbonate. Basically, you're making like seltzer water. It's like it tastes a little bit like a uh, slightly lemon flavored seltzer water because I don't like taking the baking soda plain in the water and I don't like taking lemon juice plain in the water. Now when you combine the two, lemon juice, although if you test the acidity of the lemon juice itself, it's when it's digested, it's actually the ash from the lemon that is alkalizing. So if you lemons are actually the overall net effect on the body is that they're very alkalizing to the body. And these two little cats here One's the mama and one's the son. They almost look like twins, don't they? Anyway, that's the that's the that's the mama. That's the boy. And so I like to uh, I like to mix them, but you know you got to be a little careful when you're mixing them because a lot of times they kind of you know it, it bubbles up more over the top of this. So I'll have this like this, then I'll drink you know the, the bubbles. The, basically, it's seltzer water kind of like that's what you're making because what is what is actually in seltzer water is bicarbonate it's carbonate right and but you're also getting um the lemon the ash from the lemon and it tastes good um i don't always take i'd say it's 50 percent of the time i do one or the other i do either the sodium bicarbonate which is the baking soda or um the potassium bicarbonate and i know people will say this contains aluminum well you know, it doesn't contain aluminum, and actually, the only way it contains aluminum in, indirectly is that it's processed with um, machines that have aluminum. So you might be talking a billionth of a part of aluminum, but, you know, just think about when you drink water out of pipes, whether it's plastic, copper, it's coming from, it's got treatment plants. Uh, when you're picking up plastic, drink anything out of plastic, and any of the processed foods you buy in the store um, are subjected to the same type of exposure to things that could be harmful but in extremely microscopic amounts. So I do not get, um, you know, Bob's Red Mill, I think it's called, the aluminum free, because this really is aluminum free if you're going to get that nitpicky. You should be growing your own food in the garden without pesticides or fertilizers. So, and making sure all the pots and pans you have aren't made out of aluminum. So, you know, that's the way I look at it. I mean, it's so nitpicky you can get, it's ridiculous. Uh, but I do notice that you have a energy increase when you drink this. You seem like you're more alert even in coffee. So, 
And sodium is not really bad for you. It's like sea salt is like good for you, but the problem is we have an imbalance in the typical standard American diet. We have an imbalance. We have too much sodium and not enough potassium. That is why they'll tell you the low sodium diet. Really, if you increase the potassium side, you wouldn't have to worry about it. It's the ratio. Actually, salt is actually very. It's one. Of, it's a very vital nutrient. It's just that the ratio from sodium salt to potassium gets so skewed in the average American diet is where it becomes a problem. Um, and you, the other thing is you do not want to use this stuff for taking a bath because it's a lot more money. You want you don't want to because you might pour a full cup in the bath water if you're taking a baking soda bath, let's say some apple cider vinegar or something. Um, it's cheaper to use this. And the sodium on the skin is absolutely fine. You're not going to have a problem with that. So, But to consume baking soda quite a bit, uh, you'd have to watch that sodium content. So, you know, I think... Now I got this. Uh, it's pharmaceutical and food grade. I got it off of Amazon. Pure organic ingredients. It's not the junk. It's not something that's going to be harmful to you. And since you don't need that much of it, this is going to last a very long time. And then again... I don't always use this. I use this or I use this. And like I said, I like to combine it with the lemon juice because it really, it's got a good taste to it. It tastes like a slightly uh, lemon flavored seltzer water with the ice. And when I drink it, it seems to wake me up more. Sometimes it seems more effective than espresso coffee. That's how good it works. You probably hear that flapping noise back there. That's a big old flag. <laughs> a lot of wind out here. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's something that's not that well known. And this is more money than baking soda, but you're not using that much of it, like, for consuming orally. Like, I think I take quite a bit, because, like, some people, you really should take probably less than half a tea, less than half a level teaspoon. I usually take a heaping teaspoon. That's what I do, but I have not had any problems some people, but you don't want to take this on an empty, uh, full stomach. You want to take it on an empty stomach. You take it on a full stomach. That could actually be dangerous, to tell you the truth, if you take a lot of baking soda on a full stomach, because you're going to get way too much bloating. On an empty stomach, it's a different thing, but you have to test what works for you. If you start out doing this, I would try a quarter of a teaspoon, and, you know, take it on an empty stomach. And you don't have to take it every day. If you're doing this a couple times a week, it's gonna you're, it's gonna help you. It's gonna have benefits. And I know there's detractors for this. I've seen Dr. Berg's video, but let me tell you this: um, there's other doctors. You're talking back in the, and you know I don't think these doctors are stupid. They're back in 1800s and 1920s and after even. They're using baking soda for everything. Uh, baking soda. And I do know my mom, who is a, I do know that my mom says, who is a registered nurse and um, with, a, with a degree and used to work in intensive care for more than a decade. And they use baking soda in intensive care, uh, bicarbonate actually, in, in intensive care too, and also in emergency rooms. She has been taking um, a teaspoon of baking soda in water since she was about 13, 14 years old, and she's 86, and she doesn't even have one cavity or has all her teeth, and she looks much younger than she is. I don't know if it's all from that, but I think it's part of it. So, I mean, if, if, you know, if Dr. Berg is saying it's going to do all these bad things, well, I mean, I've heard of people living well past 100 years old doing this just about every day with the baking soda. So figure it out. I mean, I don't, I'm not a doctor. I'm just saying that, you know, I use common sense. I'm just observe what other people have done. And the main drawback of baking soda is that it has sodium in it. And that's the point of what I'm saying here is you can get, a lot of people have not heard of potassium bicarbonate, which is usually where we're short on in our standard American diet. We have 
too much sodium in relation to potassium. It's not so much that sodium salt, that salt is bad, just that we don't have enough potassium. So this is a better option. And it's not much money. I got it on Amazon someplace. You'd have to look up food grade potassium bicarbonate and order it. That's, that's how you can find it. Anyway, over and out. And beware that when you put it in the glass, it's going to go pshh. And most of the time I get it where it doesn't go over the top of this, but I always have this one ready to do this. <laughs> it doesn't go all over the place. Anyway, over and out.